understand it correctly, is you help very wealthy people realize ridiculous fantasies. Yeah, I give people more interesting cocktail stories, and I spend rich people's money doing it. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> Hey, hey, Steve Sims. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm doing great. Welcome to the penthouse. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. You ready to do the entrepreneur show? Hell yeah. Hell yes. Do it. Hey, welcome to the entrepreneur show. I'm your host, John Spencer Ellis, and this awesome dude right here is Steve Sims. And today we are drinking whiskey because Steve Sims is my guest. <laughs> and there's, exactly. there's really no other explanation necessary. It's a Thursday. It is a Thursday, a and Thursday. everyone should drink uh, whiskey on a Thursday. So in, in full transparency, um, this is not the first pour, and we have no idea how this is going to go, and uh, I'm grateful that I have uh, my crew here to keep me on task. So cheers. Cheer health. To your health. And this is, this is uh, the uh, elixir that will get you there, too. Yeah, this is the good stuff. So if, let me see if I got this right. Forbes magazine described you, Steve Sims, as the real life Wizard of Oz. Yep. That is a lot to live up to, and it's also very awesome. Yeah, I don't have the cape. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, was, um, it, was quite, it was quite something, you know, from a guy that was very well known to about 2% of the planet um, to suddenly get an article like that, kind of like the, the, the coming out, you know, I actually sent it to my mom and everything and I went, like, this is what I've been up to. So it was, it was kind of cool. So that's funny because almost every entrepreneur I've ever had a conversation with, it, the same thing happens. Their mom doesn't understand what they do. So did that help un understand or help your mom understand? So um, I'm sure we'll go into it, but I started in Hong Kong and I went back to England and I actually started to tell my parents what I actually did for a living, uh, which I'm sure we're going to again later. <laughs> and they sat there and they listened to it, you know, a couple of old folk from London. And then my mum went off to the kitchen and my dad literally leant over, and I still remember this to this day, leant over, touched me on the knee and said, son, are you selling drugs? <laughs> I just had like a, an hour and a half conversation with them. They couldn't believe the stuff that I actually did, but they felt it easier to understand that I sold drugs. So. To, to give contrast, when you told your mom and dad, or, or mum, as you would say, right? When you told your mum that uh, you helped some people get married by the Pope in the Vatican, which is what you did, mm -hmm. one, one of the crazy things you've done, what was her response? Well, this happened kind of after we'd had that conversation, and after they'd kind of like came over to California and they'd seen the kind of stuff that I'd got up to. So by this time, they actually started to believe me. But <laughs> in the early years, it, uh, it took a little bit of drilling in because they didn't believe that my job was to basically go around the world and fulfill people's fantasies as crazy as they could be. <laughs> and one of the other stories I've heard you say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but a man wanted to treat his lady or it was a couple or something wanted to dine in front of the statue of David in the museum ah. in, in Florence and got serenaded by Bocelli. Bocelli. Uh, well, actually, um, the answer is yes and no to that. Okay. Um, they didn't ask me to do that. What they actually asked me to do was to set them up for a restaurant in Florence that was super exclusive that no one else had been to. And <laughs> we just thought we would see how far we could take that. So we closed down the entire museum at three o'clock in the afternoon, set a table of six up at the feet of David, the world's most iconic statue. Yeah. And uh, we actually told them we would have a local entertainer come in during dinner to serenade them. They didn't realize it was going to be the maestro himself, uh, Andrea Bocelli. So wow. uh, he, he came in. So and it finished at about 11 o'clock at night, you know, just in time for me to run out and grab a steak and an old fashioned. So it was a, <laughs> it was a cool night. Just, just a typical you know, day in the life? Well, that was a Wednesday. So, okay, well, uh, Wednesday. So Thursdays are, are obviously a, a little different. <laughs> uh, so basically what you do, is, if I understand it correctly, is you help very wealthy people realize ridiculous fantasies. Yeah, I give people more interesting cocktail stories and I spend rich people's <laughs> money doing it. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> it, it is... <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to believe that you actually do this for a living and are, yeah. are, are very well compensated and you have a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we constantly think that because this, this all started for me being a doorman in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. um, 
So my, my mum still thinks of me as that kind of like, you know, pretty roguey kind of East London boy. <laughs> and and now I'm, I'm, I'm doing this with, with Elon Musk and Richard Branson and, and the Pope. So she finds it hysterical that this is now what I do for a living. So are you able to say what work you did with Elon? No. Um, the... Uh, the only reason I've mentioned those names is because I've been photographed doing stuff with oh, them. Oh, okay. So there are other people that I've worked with that there's been no photographs, mm -hmm. so we don't say about it. And, and to be honest with you, if I wrote a book naming my clients' names, I'd be dead probably before I finish this. Right. Well, yeah. You got, I mean, there is, so let's talk about that. Um, a buddy of mine, Dax Moy, is uh, one of the highest paid personal trainers in the world, trained royalty, uh, and uh, is out of London. And people are asking him, how do you treat your, you know, when you train the royal family or he went over to Saudi and trained the royal family there as well. Uh, how do you treat them? He says, with dignity and respect and like everyone else. And I never talk about it. Yeah. Unless they unless they give permission. Do, do you agree with that? Um, I don't even seek the position. I've never been I've never been a person that's tried to grow my business on the shoulders of somebody else. So I don't want to go to one of my, my famous clients and go, hey, could you talk about me? Because then what happens is you become in debt with them. Right. Also, you've just killed the relationship because those people will never use you again right. or never see you as an equal. So I don't have any mm -hmm. rich people. I don't have any royal people. I don't have any celebrities. I have people that mm -hmm. just happen to be rich celebrities and royal. So I, I, have, I have people first. And the uh, the business card second. So let me ask you this: is, This is a question that I, I get asked a lot. Um, you know, we're, we're filming this the week of Thrive. You're one of the speakers. I, I, have some, I have some of the other speakers in here. I was good enough, or fortunate enough, I should say. Hopefully, I was good enough to be a speaker two years ago on the stage in San Diego. And I always get this question: They said, "I want a selfie with." this person or that person. Um, but then what happens is depending on how you ask, it positions you in, in an inferior position uh, because you're asking of something rather than just two people having fun and say, Hey, yeah. let's take a picture together. What, what's the right way to do it to where you can capture that moment because it's awesome, but you don't negate yeah. in any opportunity. So, and I can, I, I get that a lot uh -huh. and I know it from personal experience okay. because you get to work with a lot of people and you go, this is brilliant. You know, I want to send my mum this picture. I want to send my wife this picture. And you can't because you've now gone past that zone. So bottom line of it is, here it is, it's the first hour. Okay. If you're going to be working with mm -hmm. someone, never catch them at the end of the night because everyone by the end of the night has had a few tipples in them and they're all of a sudden very brave and they're like, hey, Richard, can I get a photograph with you? It gets annoying for them. Yeah. So respect their time. Catch it in the first hour and catch it. And this is going to feel <clears throat> very uncomfortable, mm. but catch it at the beginning of the night. So as they come in, say, hey, you know, I, I don't want to disturb your night, but I also don't want to kind of interfere with you as the night gets on and we're all partying and dancing and having some fun. Do you mind if I get a, a quick picture out of the way? You know, and you do it like that, yeah. humbly, respectfully, mm -hmm. stone, cold, sober. No one else is asking. Mm -hmm. So all of the people that I have done that with, mm -hmm. I've done it quickly mm -hmm. and I've, I've done it with Elon. I've done it with Richard. I've done it with these people. And then I've ended up doing stuff with them. Okay. And we've joked about it. I didn't do that with Sir Elton John. <laughs> Eight years went by, never got a single picture with him. Never. And funny enough, this year, uh, this year we were, we were getting ready to do the event at the, um, the Los Angeles Oscars that, that I do each year with them. And I made a joke about, I can't believe this. You know, eight years, never had a, <laughs> had a photograph with, uh, with uh, Elton. And they actually phoned up and they went, turn up here, we're going to get some shoot. And they actually set up a little photo shoot for a few people. I've seen that picture. Yeah, they set it up for yeah. me and it was so good. And it was really, really cool for them to do that. And I'm with them in November. They are great people, but there's the tip. Get it within the first okay. hour. Otherwise, the relationship will be hampered once you become friends. Because as soon as you turn around to a friend and go, can I get a selfie with them? Then it establishes a pecking order and you're right. screwed. No, it does. One thing that I've taught people that is somewhat similar is to find a common friend that you have and 
and, and, and this is actually working, and you can't BS it, it has to be real, but just say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you knew Bob. I said, oh, yeah, I know Bob, and uh, yeah, I went, I was with him in Australia. I said, we got to take a picture together and show him because he's going to be blown away that we've actually connected oh, as well. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a- Because then, because it doesn't yeah. take it off. It's not here, it's out there. Yeah, I've often, I've often, I've often used that. Okay. And um, I take it a step further. I get videos with him. Okay. I always go, you know, I, I know you know Jimmy. It's his birthday. Or, you know, I know you have, I was with, um, I was with uh, Jean-Paul de Jouria, yeah. and we were having a good conversation. I wanted a picture. I'd already met him like five times prior. Mm-hmm. So I'd, again, gone past that zone. Right. Um, but he spoke at Joe Polish's event. You're right, I remember so that. So straight yeah. away, I was able to go, hey, let's, let's do a stupid video for Joe. And bang, we were able to do a little thing. Right. So I got what I wanted. He got what he right. wanted. Joe got a little bit of a mention and a shout out from Jean Paul, and it, it was all good. So I do the same, but I'm a great believer in video. And by the way, Jean Paul, if you're not familiar who that is, uh, he is the creator of Paul Mitchell oh. hair products and also Patron, Patron. Tequila. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's not very smart or successful. Do you know Jean Paul de Joya is by far one of the best entrepreneurs out there? Yeah. Um, so what makes him good? Oh, he's a, he's a real family man. But when when I say family man, anyone that comes into the company, he's adopting them. Okay. So they have to be a member of the family, and he's that firm with them. He doesn't he doesn't have an email, and the reason he doesn't have an email, his his assistant has an email. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have an email because he said if it's that important, we should have a phone call. Right? You know, he's he's old school. Well, that's, that's also the, the way he's focusing on the highest use and best use of his time. And he also knows oh, yeah. that if he gets a call, it's going to lead to something significant. And so he's leveraging his time. Yeah, his story of, of sleeping in a dry cleaners mm-hmm. um, and just his work ethic. Was that his first business, dry cleaning? No, he was. He um, he worked he just slept in a dry. One. He worked in a dry cleaners okay. um, and ended up sleeping there because he couldn't afford anywhere to sleep. I love and so stories. what he did was he would polish the floors so the people would come into the dry cleaners the following day and they go. You clean the floors. You would like, I-, I want my workplace to be clean. And they'd be like, that's fantastic. And he's like, not really. If I'm sleeping on the floor, I want it to be clean. <laughs> so, but Jean-Paul de Jouria, I believe, if you ever get the chance to see him uh, on stage or give a speech, yeah. hands down, can't stress it enough, one of the best speeches you'll ever hear. He did it at uh, Joe Polish's event. Oh, yeah. I'll give you one little story about this guy, yeah, which yeah. would just signify him. Uh, I celebrated my anniversary with my wife the other day. 33 years. Wow. You know, love you, Claire. She's the best woman in the world, hands down. She was a receptionist at a hairdresser's just outside of London. I was a bricklayer. So we never had a lot of money. And the hairdresser started this product called Paul Mitchell. And that was like an upscale product. And my wife used to bring it home. <laughs> and she was like, oh, this is from America. It was, the, it was our first ever luxury product, you know? So when I bumped into him uh, in Arizona, and it was actually at Joe Polish's house, um, I said to him, I said, oh, hey. And I was just getting a coffee. I went, oh, hey, it's a pleasure to meet I said, you know, I've got a funny story. To tell. And he turned around and he went, I'd like to hear it, but I've actually got to go do something. So maybe another time. And I was like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And he walked off. And I thought to myself, it's the palm off. You know, it's the kind of like, <laughs> you know, being that I look warm and fuzzy, not a lot of people <laughs> want to talk to me. But I thought that's it. So I turned around and I'm literally getting my coffee. And all of a sudden I get these hands on my shoulder. He went, tell me that story. There's a chair over there. Let's sit down. Takes me to this chair. Oh, we great. sat down. We were there for about 30 minutes. And I said, look, my wife's not going to believe this. So... I want to get a video. And so we <laughs> shot this video and he went, show me that. And so I played it and he went, he hit delete. He went, that's horrible. Let's go again. We did three shoots to get it to my wife. That's how much the guy cares about how he's seen, how he comes, mm-hmm. not arrogantly, but he just wanted to give the best he could for someone that had actually been in love with his product from an early age. Very so cool. that's the cause. So Jean-Paul, love you, man. Thank you for everything you do. So uh, he's a good solid cat. Oh my gosh. You guys, we got to take our first break, and uh, we'll probably take a couple sips yeah. of this uh, here whiskey. And when we come back, we're going to learn more about the true Wizard of Oz and also how to create your magical experiences for yourself, for your clients, your customers, and the people that are important to you. So go nowhere. Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you. And sometimes you just need a coach, 
a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time. All right, welcome back to The Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, John Spencer Ellis, and my guest today is Steve Sims, and we are drinking whiskey, and this is the first time this has ever happened on the show, and, and I actually had a feeling it would happen when uh, we booked you as a guest. So I, I appreciate you uh, taking me out of my normalcy. You're welcome. <laughs> One thing I want to talk about in this segment is you create these incredible experiences for a lot of wealthy, well-known people, um, people with a lot of resources. And so you can create more because the, the financial resources allow that. Not everyone has that all the time, and sometimes it's not necessary. What are some ways that people that are entrepreneurs can create incredible experiences for their clients and their customers and their fans? So I had a client that for five years running, we had always looked after every anniversary. And we'd spent anywhere between 50 to three quarters of a million dollars on this one day. Wow. So on the 20th anniversary, he actually contacted me and said, hey, I want to do it. I didn't know it was the 20th. He said, we've got an anniversary coming up, blah, blah, blah. It needs to be fantastic. It needs to be wonderful. It needs to be impactful. And it was that last word. And the reason I'm telling you this story will make sense. We actually then interviewed him to find out how they had first met. And we found out that he used to sit outside where she used to come out from college. And so he set up a rug, a boom box, and a picnic hamper. And he, when she came out, he knocked up this cheap bottle of wine, a bottle of champagne. He went, care to join me? And he put on his boom box and had these, like, you know, these tunes coming out from the 80s. Very cheesy college dating scene. Very wealthy couple. We found through photographs the color of that rug, the boom box he had. We replicated that event for 1600 bucks, wow. of which 1200 bucks of it was finding a damn boom box that worked. <laughs> she stepped into the car and we told her to go off because it was her anniversary. She didn't know if she was flying to Paris. She didn't know if she was sipping champagne on a diamond vault. All of these things she had done before. She had no idea what amazing thing was going on car came around to a park, a regular park, and there he was in the middle of the park on this rug with the hamper and a bottle of champagne. She got out of that car and it all came flooding back to her. She literally broke down and they had to carry her to this rug mm -hmm. to be able to sit down. Mm -hmm. My clients have the ability to not have money get in the way of them dreaming. A lot of people just fail to freaking dream. If you dream and then focus on the detail, mm. it's the impact that comes from that that makes the memory, not the price tag. A lot of people fail to dream. Yeah, absolutely. They're scared of it. They're terrified. You don't have a lot of money. I can't, aff I can't afford to dream of a fancy car. I can't afford to dream of a life that's only going to depress me that I don't have. So they don't dream at all. And so your answer to that is what? Dream and dream big. <laughs> It's so simple. Yeah, it is. I'm just thinking about something. You know, we're here in Vegas. There's every hotel has an incredible spa. Yep. Yeah, I can crush the spa. After I work out, I just like I can go and just like chill out for like three hours. There's always and, I'm, and that's an experience. They call it the spa experience. And it's incredibly overpriced. Some of it's worth it. Actually, Steve Wynn's stuff. He has some of the, the best stuff in all of Las Vegas, which is uh, Wynn and Encore. If you guys are ever in town, you want a really great spa experience. There you go. Um, they, when, when you go into a spa, you transcend. It's not just like a cutoff point. You're, you're in the casino, you're in the spa. It's day, it's night. It's a transcendence from one experience to another that allows you to kind of embrace the moment. So you pivot inside. I should, I, I should say transcendence. Like the pivot would be more of like a, a 90 degree. Mm. How do you help people transition and, and move into an experience? What, what are the steps or the processes like sensory wise? Well, the first thing is I've often said that I've never ever given a client what they asked for. I gave them what they needed. 
So never listen to people, feel people, understand okay. where it's coming from, the context of the conversation. We, we often joke that, you know, you need to use your inner Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I hear that you want to do this, but why do you want to do it? Why is it important to you? You said you want to do X, Y, Z. If I give that to you, is that really going to wake you up at two o'clock in the morning with a cold sweat going, holy hell, I can't believe I did that? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, the answer is no. So why is it important to you? You'll find that it was a family member that this was important to. It was a moment in their life that was signified by that song, that movie, that X, Y, Z. And so you've got to find out the engineering behind it because without that, you're running on empty. Um, once you've got that, then you can go, okay, now I need to provide this because that's going to be the thing that's going to wake them up at two o'clock in the morning. You've got to find out what the context of the dream and the request is. So you have to ask a lot of questions. A lot of questions. You have to listen intently. You have to probe. You have to ask. You know, I often say in the book, you know, you ask why three times. Because the first time they talk to you, they're giving you what they think they want. Mm -hmm. The second time they talk to you, they're talking to you to make themselves appear smart so that you'll respect that. You know, there's like a shield. Mm -hmm. When you keep asking why, you actually get down into the core of the issue, the love, the desire, the want, the respect. So constantly ask why. And don't be frightened. When was the last time you went into a doctor and you went, I, I've got a pain, I need open heart surgery, book it Tuesday. It doesn't <laughs> happen. You go yeah. into the doctor and you go, I've got a pain. And the doctor goes, where, how, why? Okay, I'm the one that's going to tell you You've, you've got to have that kind of power of confidence within what you do to tell them what they need, not listen to them. You just said one word that has been the theme of almost every single episode of this show I've done, and that's confidence. Okay. Because if you don't have it or if it's not high enough, I've heard Ed Milet say this a lot too, and, and people ask him often. Big shout out to Ed. Yeah, yeah. Cool Ed's guy. A, Ed's Ed. a cool guy. Smart dude. Kind of jacked. A uh, little bit. <laughs> I think we're very similar physique. I was going to say that. The same, similar, same, same thing. Um, mostly profile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, I've heard him say that um, there's a direct linear relationship between someone's confidence and their ability to succeed. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree. Um, totally agree. And not just because I'm sharing the stage with him Sunday, but um, <laughs> totally agree with that comment. However... There's a however to it. Mm -hmm. As a British bricklayer, I never knew I could fail. So I had ignorance. I didn't have confidence. Mm. I had the inability to see that it could go wrong. And you'll be amazed at how many times if you carry that off, it could be confused for confidence. You see a lot of people going, yeah, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And you go, but that's not right. That's not going to work. But they appear confident about it. They're not confident. They're ignorant to the outcome. Now, I would go into rooms and go, hey, you want, you want to play drums with Guns N' Roses? You want to get married in the Vatican by the Pope? You want to go backstage with Elton John? You want to walk on on a movie? Yeah, I'll make that happen. It wasn't the case that I had a lot of confidence at the time. I just couldn't foresee why anyone would ever say no to me. And that's how I got through it. I was ignorant until I became confident. I love it. Ignorant before I became confident. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about your book and we're going to do some fishing. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you. And sometimes you just need a coach, a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time. Welcome back to this third and final segment of The Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, John Spencer Ellis. And my guest today is the immortal, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the wizard, the real life wizard of Oz, Mr. Steve Sims. Yep. And, and yes, we really are drinking whiskey. This isn't just colored water for effect. 
Uh, when you when you uh, when you own the show, you can do stuff like this. A good man, good man. Yes, right, right. And I and I had when I knew you were going to be on the show, I'm like, I have to have really good whiskey, and we're going to drink on the show. Yeah. So has to be done. Yeah. Well, there's standard operating procedure. It's, it's probably going to be done when I'm on stage. You know. Is that right? To, probably. probably. All right. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be the first, I'm afraid. But yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk. I want to talk about your book. Is it blue fishing? Do I have the name correct? Blue fishing, the art of making things happen. Okay. What does that mean, blue fishing? <laughs> it means nothing. <laughs> um, we used to, uh, when we started off uh, with Bluefish, which was my concierge company, okay. we used to throw these events, and we still do it now. And it still makes me kind of laugh. So <laughs> I apologize to my clients for laughing at you. But I'll set up a party over Oscar weekend or Monaco Grand Prix or the Russian Fashion Week. And I will sell $5,000 passes to come to a party and not tell anyone what time it is or where it is until the week of the event. And in the old days, one of our passwords was finish this sentence, one fish, two fish, red fish. So we'd have these people turn up and go, blue fish. Now you would get these people that would turn up and go, I'm here for the party. And they wouldn't say it. And we would turn around and go, well, there's no party for you. <laughs> and we'd send them away. So as things went on within the career, and our party started being in Stad, in Monaco, at the Oscars, at the Grammys, at the Fashion Weeks. And we started getting bigger and bolder and doing these things. People would literally refer to it and go, are oh, you bluefish the hell out of that party? Or you? Because we had taken something that was really cool and just gone, well, how far can we go with this? Like the Florence Bocelli thing. Yeah. How far can I take this? And it was that idea of questioning, well, is this it? Or can I take it better? that became the blue fishing aspect. So I have to admit, I wasn't the one that came up with blue fishing. My clients would literally say, hey, I did this event the other week and it was a good event, but I wanted to see how I could blue fish it. So I did this. So um, it just became a verb that people started using. So huh. we got fellow blue fishers out there and we got blue fishing and, and that was how it came about. Interesting. So who is the ideal reader for the book? Someone that's not willing to accept, you know, that's, that's the Except problem. normalcy? Just accept, accept to know, accept where they are, accept what they've got. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a whiskey drinking, well, still am a whiskey drinking biker from Britain, you know, <laughs> and now I can call the Vatican on speed. I can freaking text the, uh, the Vatican. So if I can do that, you really don't have any excuse whatsoever. If you read, the, and I'm not trying to get people to buy the book, um, but if you read any of my stuff, um, you'll see that if it, it's very primitive, very ugly, very raw, which is the most impactful. Um, and I want people to look at it and go, I don't need to be here. I don't need to settle for this. I can do something about it. So the reader is the person or the, the reader, the personality behind it is the one that says, I am not going to accept this as my life. I'm not going to accept this as as good as I can make the party. I'm not going to accept this as good as I can look. Some of those people that are just not willing to accept that. Okay. Um, I want to hear one more. Was that more. a quick answer? No. Well, it was a perfect answer because it was the correct answer. I want to know more about, like, you, you do stuff with the Oscars. The yeah. Oscars is a spectacle. Yeah. Um, what makes the Oscars special well the oscars is the award show element what we work with is this upcoming artist called sir elton john and i believe he's going to be really good yeah at some, at some point yeah, I, heard, I heard i heard he can sing and he can play piano okay he's quite good yeah yeah he, he can't dance for shit but you right. know the other bit he's yeah. good at um but uh sorry Ellen. um but yeah we actually uh partnered with them ages ago through a, an absolute brilliant guy called scott campbell and um it's a party and we are there to make sure the right people. Oh, this come is along. that big Elton John after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the one who puts that together. Yeah, we well, we're Andy that's put, famous. Andy actually puts Andy's the actual <laughs> production man. But, oh wow. Um, um, and he does a fantastic job. But we're there to make sure the right people show up. Um, and so, okay, so who are the right people? Well, for start, it's a charity event. Okay. Um, so we want those people to again not accept that there should be any reason that AIDS should exist. Um, any idiot out there that thinks AIDS is just a certain typecast genre right. specific are uh, probably the kind of idiot that's going to catch it. Um, it's a, it shouldn't exist. 
And it's a lifestyle disease that we need to eradicate. And I'm very, I'm very much of a believer in that. You know, we shouldn't have that. We shouldn't have cancer. And we should stand up and do something about it. You were talking to me before, which I gained million-fold respect for you in how you stand up to cancer. Mm -hmm. um, no one should be willing to accept that those things should exist, mm -hmm. so we should do everything to get rid of them. So I bring people to the Elton John H Foundation Oscar party to party hard, to drink hard, to jump around with our favorite people. We had Miley Cyrus there last year. Uh, Steven Tyler's always there. Um, you, John's there jamming on stage. Some of the mashups that he actually jumps up on stage. So after the Oscars, this is just the big party. After oh, that. hell yeah. There's um, there's the cocktail reception. There's a great dinner with like Gordon Ramsay. Then there's like an it auction. Sounds, it sounds horrible. And, and I actually would like to go. It's one of these things that I have to do. Yeah, I know, you know? I don't know, I don't know how you get through someone, it. Someone has to. Do you know, I, as I joked, um, I'm as, as you already know, I'm black t-shirt and jeans forever. You yeah. know, everywhere I go, no matter what, where it is, I have a tux. The only time that tux comes out yeah. is for Elton's party in New York and Elton's party in LA. And I put that bad boy on and, and I sweat the hell out of it. I have a good time <laughs> that night. <laughs> I want to ask you one final question. I'm curious about this because you said you need to get the right people in the room and it is a charity event. Uh -huh. A lot of the people with the deepest pockets aren't always the best known. And, and a lot of people don't understand that because they talk about celebrity net worth and blah, blah, blah. A lot of the people that you have no idea who they are are far wealthier. So how do you ensure that you get the right people in the room that can donate the most to the cause, but also the people in the room like Steven Tyler, I have his autographed guitar right over there. You saw that? Uh, because people know who he is and obviously he's got deep pockets as well and 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 uh, loves Elton, I'm sure. Uh, how do you, what's the mix? How do you, how do you figure that out? So I've always um, been very particular on who I accept as a client. Mm -hmm. I find that if I accept the right client at the beginning, I eradicate 99% of the problems. Mm -hmm. And if you take on a client that's an a-hole, guess what? A-holes don't get better with years. Okay, so get rid of them on the early stages. and Stop looking at that checkbook. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Um, I have about 20% of my clients are household names. The rest of the people in my database are richer and unknown. I have yeah. people that head countries that yeah. you have no idea. The real, you'll see, you'll see Brad Pitt on a movie, and you'll see a guy scuttle down on the red carpet behind him. You don't realize he was the guy that put up twenty million dollars to make that movie. That's right. You know, Brad made four out of it. You know, he put twenty and he made a hundred out of it. That's the cat you want to know. Um, so those are my people, and as long as you make sure it's the right people in the door, mm -hmm. then you can go to events right. like Sir Elton John's and have the credibility that you only know good people. Therefore, you can open up your Rolodex and go, hey, who wants to come play? I'm, I'm doing an event in um, November in uh, New York. And I literally just said, you know, max out 30 people. How many people come want to jam with me for the day, learn stuff, and then go and hang out with Elton John afterwards? And I know that anyone that's going to respond to me mm -hmm. is a good person because I had that filter right at the beginning. So awesome. Now I have to check my calendar. 5th of November <laughs> is going on. I'll have my tux on. All right. What, what, I got to see you sweating your tux. Oh, I swear. I, that bad boy gets sweat. I dance. <laughs> it's not pretty, but I dance. Yeah. You got, you got, to, you got to do the, 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 the lame middle-aged dude like I do and bite your bottom lip. I mean, so you yeah, that's, if you do that, everything kind of falls into place. Yeah, no, it's not pretty. I'm just glad there's no video <laughs> evidence. I actually did it with um, Jesse Elder came a couple of years ago, uh -huh. and there was video footage of Jesse Elder. Je Jesse can dance, though. Jesse does have moves. Yeah, he does. Jesse is a sexy beast of a man. He, he is. And so. Jesse, and uh, you, you need to get on my show, Jesse. I haven't seen you since uh, <laughs> I think we were in Austin together last time. Anyway, Jesse Elder, you're coming up next. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. How can people get in touch with you? Um, well, they can text Ugly Works. Uh, that's uh, Ugly Works, one word, W R K S, uh, W O R K S, too much whiskey, to 345 345. Or they can go to stevedsims.com and just subscribe to their newsletters. But if they do either one of those, they'll actually get a PDF of Blue Fishing. They'll get to see an awesome video I did called Chug Test, uh, which is the way of getting assholes out of your business and your life. And um, it's cool. You'll get it put up with my rants and stuff. All right, cool. So the book is called Blue Fishing, uh, Steve Sims. Check him out. Thank you so much. You've just experienced The Entrepreneur Show. Thanks for being here. Bye.
Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you. And sometimes you just need a coach, a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time.